dun, dun. Good morning, everybody. Mark Volt with Voltland Outdoors, and we are done with a 12-month, $1.3 million project, and it's time to go fishing. So we are headed off to the driftless region of southwestern Wisconsin. Sleepyhead. Hey. Hi. Slept the whole time. Hey, everybody. So I've been driving for two hours from North Aurora, Illinois to uh, to Madison, Wisconsin. And now we're way over on the west edge of Wisconsin, heading out Wisconsin County Road 14, straight west. Where? To Black Earth, Wisconsin, which for me marks the heart, for me, the best area of what is called the Driftless region, Driftless region of southwestern Wisconsin. What's the southwestern, what's, what's the Driftless region? 10,000 years ago, 10,000 BC, 11,000, 13,000 BC, there was a big ice age. The ice age meant there were gargantuan glaciers, sheets of ice covering this entire upper part of North America, um, a couple miles thick. And when those glaciers started to melt, they started to move south. When they started to move south, as they melted, there were actually certain regions, well, most of it, was like, a, imagine, it's like a great big snowplow. It just flattens everything. So the majority of the country around here is actually kind of flat and featureless. You just described a lot of Minnesota, a lot of North Dakota, a lot of South Dakota, even parts of Wisconsin, but there's parts of Wisconsin that got missed. So you end up with wonderful rolling hills that you'll see. And just as importantly with the rolling hills, what you also get, what you also get are creeks actual all kinds of spring fred ice cold clear creeks and it's got inland trout all over the place brownies cutthroats rainbow you'll catch a lot of little guys you know i mean you still got to work for it but the driftless region this is what it looks like it's all these rolling hills start in southwestern illinois or southwestern wisconsin sorry it's everything it's like a i mean it's like a postcard driving through southwestern wisconsin you get these rolling hills you see that and in between are all these creeks and we're headed off to black earth creek because wisconsin god bless those guys wisconsin is super friendly by law to fly fishermen Every creek belongs to you. You can walk onto somebody's property to go and fish inside those streams and nobody can stop you. They can't mark the land private, nothing. They embrace fly fishermen because they embrace the revenue that comes with it. Why not? So I'm going to spend the whole day, I'm going to spend the whole day after this year-long AI machine learning project that I've been on, that I've been architecting and driving. I need a break and this is my, this is my treat through some more of the, the driftless region, these big hills. We'll probably see a lot of turkeys in the next 15 miles. I won't be a bit surprised. It's turkey season, spring turkey season. Turkeys are all out everywhere. Everybody's out hunting them with bows. I got buddies out here right now, archery buddies that are actually hunting today, and I wanted to fish. So, let's go do a tour of the driftless. 15 miles out to, to Black Earth Creek. The other thing that's cool about the Driftless region is the, the local communities, the counties, have a lot of fly fishermen club kind of things. And they've gone out of their way to prepare the creeks. You could go for eight miles and there might be 200 individual little dams, little spillways that they've manually created. You could just walk, fish, walk, fish walk fish. We'll start to see those spillways shortly when we get out here at the Black Earth Creek. And then you'll start to, you'll know why I want to spend my whole day out here. What you need, I'll, I'll be, I got to prepare you. You don't need a heavyweight rod. Do not come here with an eight weight. Don't even come here with a six for that matter. I've got a six and it's the absolute edge. Uh, what you want is something tall and light. You don't want a nine foot six weight. You certainly don't want a nine foot eight weight. You're crazed. You won't. You just won't have fun. The fish aren't that big. Um, 
what works for me is a 12 foot, two, three weight, single handed rod that's got not a two, three weight line on it, but it's got like a six to seven to eight weight line over overloaded. And there's a reason for that. We've got in this area, when you start to see the rivers and stuff, what you will notice is it's not always clean down by the, the edge, by the edge of the, the shore. So you need to be able to get over some of the reeds. You need, you, need the, you need a tall rod, but you want it lightweight. And the cricks, they're not that big, so you don't have 50 foot, 60 foot, 80 foot casts. So if you guys know the theory, you need for a rod to load, for a, a rod to bend, the matching weight line, when they say, oh, you need an eight weight line for an eight weight rod, you need a three weight line for a three weight rod, etc. What they're really thinking is you need about three to three and a half times the rod length. You need that distance of line out the tip so that there's a certain amount of mass that begins to bend the rod back and forth when you're casting. That's called loading the rod. But in this part, in, in this area, uh, let's see, what can I go show you guys? The creeks are even starting up right now. We're in, I forget what this place is called, Cross Plains, yeah. Called Cross Plains, there's actually a creek right over there that starts. But let me get back to the, the loading here. What we'll see is that these creeks are small enough that when they talk about loading a fly rod, they're expecting you to be making 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 foot casts. They think that's what's normal for the casting that you do. But the creeks here are small enough that you're only going, your line is only about two rod lengths out of the, out of the rod. They're 20, 20, 30, 30 foot cast. That's pretty typical. You're working a tiny little part of the, of the river. So you only got 20 foot. If you got a nine foot, let's say you got a 10 foot rod for easy math. If you got a 10 foot rod, then that means, actually I'm gonna pick this up uh, in a second. I gotta see if the fly fishing shop is here. There's, I always like to buy local lures. We are in cross planes and we are going to swing around the backside here and see if these guys are still in business. We're gonna take a look at one of these. See the public parking everywhere? Ah, look, what do you see? Fisherman right there. He's using a reel. But there's these kind of creeks that the drifting region is filled with. It's just heaven. I mean, look down here, guys. Look at this little creek. This is, I think this is Black Earth Creek. And you can fish on any part of it, anytime, anywhere. Look at that, it's just gorgeous. And the towns are just set up for it. I sure hope this guy's in business after COVID. I've got a few lures, but I don't have a ton. This is what I'm looking for. Artisan skincare, copied trailer. Oh, this does not look good. It used to be right down here in Cross Plains. I think this was him. And that looks like a, just a house now, not a store. Gonna pause for a second. All the trout are gonna be hiding either inside the grass right there, feeding, waiting for something. They're at, they're at the bottom underneath these ripples wait, that's a feeding station for them, or they're actually hiding under the cutaway bank here, which means they're not far, it's not a big cast. So long rod, long rod, shorter line, heavier line, and then you're just laying it down on there and casting. It's still a nice looking cast. You're still fly casting. You're not dangling. I'm not saying dangle. I'm saying that you don't need as big a line. It just needs to be heavier and you'll be a lot happier working a street. All right, it looks like our guy's not here anymore. I'm glad I bought, bought stuff before I came. We're gonna keep driving because we're not fishing here. We're fishing in, starting in Mazamani, I think it's called. So let's keep going. Freckles, come on, let's go, come on. There's a little fly fishing tip from your Uncle Mark. When you're putting your gas cap back on and you're going, you're planning on going fly fishing, don't touch the cover. 
you're going to touch the cover with a piece of paper towel. I have been amazed at how sensitive fish are to the taste of petrol. You know, they get you get that on your finger even a little bit, and everything you touch the whole day, everything carries a little bit of that petroleum on it, and they they smell it and they literally shift off. You can see them move away. It's it's stupefying. Don't touch things like that. There we go. Let's go fish. Cross Plain, Wisconsin. Just a little town right up against the hills. See that hill? Starting to get gentrified a little bit because it's so close to Madison. And Madison is becoming a huge IT hotbed. But you can see even this place is tucked right in between the hills. See the two hills? Isn't that cool? If you guys ever get a chance, man, you gotta come to Southwest Wisconsin. If you live within a tri-state region and all you think about is going to Yellowstone, all you think is going to the Great Lakes and trying to fish out of the rivers there and you've never tried the Driftless region, you are missing out, let me tell you. All right, let's go. What you're gonna see now it's a Black Earth Creek is just on the other side of those railroad tracks. And it just winds around and goes in and out. And this road, County Road 14, it just cuts right through it all. So here's, here's Black Earth Creek right here. And now there's trees all around there, but we're, we're not going after that. We're going out into the farmland. And you're gonna see that we can go and fish right out in the middle of the farmer's field. And instead of cursing us and getting mad at us, do you see that right there? It is, it is so close to, if you have ever fished Yellowstone, you know exactly what I'm describing. These little creeks only 10 feet across. The bank is elevated. It's cut away and down a couple feet, sometimes even three feet down to the bank. The cows are standing around you. Moo. Okay, they're not mooing in Yellowstone, but Yellowstone's got rivers like that too. The Yellowstone River is just cut away. Uh, from the from the bank or cut uh, it's it's cut away and, and, and it's it's down it's there's a drop I'm so busy looking at the features here I'm hardly having trouble talking it's just so pretty here God look at that just rolling hill after rolling hill we got a couple miles before we go and check out my very first place I like to go. Everybody goes here. Uh, Festigo County Park. Uh, uh, yeah. Look at all the people already here. Uh, we got to try it, I guess. Right down there, that second bridge is what we're going to try. Just pull the rod out. On Sherbel Road. See that? Okay, so the pond is for all the mere mortals. We don't want to do that. But we do want to try to check out this little creek over here. See what we can do. This pond. Fishing is hunting, standing still. See what these guys are doing. See that black earth creek right there. Let's get down. All right. This place has got just a few too many people here already, even at seven o'clock in the morning. But the cool part, let me get turned around here. The cool part about Wisconsin is, you, you, what you'll see is everybody's just, they're just parked on the side of the road to, to go and fish. They, he's, he's got access to the only little riffles here. And I could try fishing right inside there, but I know better places. I'll let you guys take a peek inside. And freckles is like see the creek over there. Just a little tough. Ah, I'm a little tempted right here. Yeah, we're gonna go in. We're gonna go in. And this is the cool part about Wisconsin. If you want to fish, ha, pull over, dump your car on the side of the road. That's how it works here. But you better have your fishing permit ready. Man, they are gonna be merciless when it comes to if you don't have your permit, if you didn't pay. Even 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 non-residents, I had to cough up 50 bucks for the fishing permit for the year. 
$10 more for the Inland Trout Stamp. $10 more for the Great Lakes Trout and Salmon if I decide to go this summer. So 70 bucks. Who cares? I'm going to be fishing here 10 times all over the summer easily. 10 different weekends. I'm going to get my money back. It's money well spent. So you just pull over, but you better get your permit. Let's go see. That rod made for me. Put my name on it, right from Angler's Roost Enterprises. 129 bucks. God bless that guy. All right, that's where we're going fishing. We're gonna go toss a line in and just, just see. What do you start off with? Always the same thing, little brass-headed, brass-headed prince nymphs. So they got a little brass head, they got little white wings, they got a little red tail. That's it, that should be a good start. Get it down to the bottom where they're sitting, see what happens, let's go. Got a prince nymph on here. The wind is coming from camera right. The roll, a, a roll lift, like a spiral lift is gonna be your best friend on a day like today, like this. Where you're just trying to get it upstream, but also upwind. If you look at the branches, you'll see the wind is coming from camera right. So if I lift straight up and go straight back, I'm gonna actually lose control of the tip of the line. What I'm looking for is instead to do a little lift like this that puts a little extra loading in It puts a little extra loading on the line that allows you to have a shorter piece of line out, still get the tip of the rod to load like that. It still loads a little so you can get a decent, a decent enough cast. Now I might have to put my phone on a tripod. You can also do this one, I call it a wiggle lift like that. It's a little S but it also adds extra loading to the rod instead of just jerking it straight back and casting. Instead of jerking it straight back and casting to get your loop, it puts a little extra load in there that just lets you position the, position the tip of your rod, position the hook a little easily, more easily without having to throw it all the way back and possibly hit something. So lift it up. There's, you see that little pause I'm putting? The little lift a pause, pull again, lay it back down. And yeah, there'll be some people out there saying, oh gosh, that line's hitting the surface really hard. No, it's not. I'm putting a nymph down and I'm not planning on anything. I'm planning on my fish is down there and I'm casting 10 feet up ahead of it. You'll see that I'm going for the far bank. I'm looking for a little bit of a transition over there. It's only about 48 degrees, 50 degrees out today. Yes, I'm still in shorts. <laughs> Let's look at that little S lift again. Watch this. S, and throw it back. It takes a little bit of timing. Just let it pause, cast, throw it up. Let me get my dog, I'll be right back. Okay, we tried a couple casts here, but this, this is still not my favorite part of the river, so let me call Freckles. Freckles! Whoosh! Still headed to Blacker. We still got a couple of, a couple of miles to go before we get to the part of the, the creek that I can just walk from a, a couple miles and not have to worry. Look at this. I can't believe my dog went all the way down the road like that. Freckles, what were you thinking? Freckles, are you crazed? I love these hills. All right, let's keep going. Here we are at Black Earth Creek, everybody. And the one thing that describes Black Earth Creek, no, that's not it, that's a ditch. The one thing that describes Black Earth Creek is Black Earth Creek. We're about to drive over it, although this isn't always the best place to fish, not right here. But I've tried and I've caught a couple here. It's just a little slow, a little windy, but right 
right down in there. That's not bad. But I like nestled up here. We're, we'll be out of the wind a little bit. I like that better. But you can see the creek goes all the way around here, goes up that road. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on. But over here towards Mazomini, Mazomini, um, it's just uh, better, better built up. I've got some really nice little browns where the creek comes and crosses right over here. In there. Look at that. Groomed. My God. And you can fish everything here. All of it. Just park wherever you want and walk up. It's not only that, it's not that the people tolerate you, it's they enjoy your presence. Just don't dirty it up. Don't leave any garbage. I'll come and find you and beat the hell out of you. All right. It's down inside here. See that? It's a little slow moving here, so we're looking for where there's a bend up ahead that I can park. And look at this, everybody, I'm, I'm passing by vehicle after vehicle. They're just parked on the side of the road. Why? Because they can, that's why. Just parked. There he is fishing out that way. Hmm. Here's a tip from your Uncle Mark. Watch where the locals are going to fish. If they've got Wisconsin plates, if they look like they live around here, and, and, and look at the gear they're using and look where they're going because they've been fishing this place their whole lives. They're not gonna be wasting any time going someplace where there aren't any fish. And what's rule number one? What's rule number one of fishing from Uncle Mark? Always fish where the fish are. Don't fish where the fish aren't. You won't catch fish. Always fish where the fish are. Rule number two, give the fish what they want to eat. That depends on the fish. That comes later though. All right, let's go get set up down here. Here we just pulled into the bridges, two bridges trail in Mazomany, Wisconsin. We're gonna go up here and walk along a little ways. In fact, if I wanted to, I could literally walk for miles upstream here uh, and just fish and fish and fish and fish. And I might do that, we'll see. I think I'm gonna bring my tripod with because I might show you guys a couple of casts now that it's starting to warm up. Mazomany, right there, Mazomany. Hey, six weight rod, absolute minimum, check. Got my gear on the back. Let's show you what this looks like. That's it, minimalist guys. Don't wear a vest. Don't do, don't do any of that stuff. You just, you just make it so much less fun when you start throwing all kinds of gear in there. I've got, I've got seven pound test line monofilament that I fold in half to make my leaders and I'll show you how to do that. I've got some uh, uh, four pound monofilament line that I use for my tippet. I've even got two pound if, uh, if you want. That's all you need. You don't even gotta kill yourself. I mean, why do you gotta stack the odds all in your favor just to catch a fish? If you lose the fish, but you catch it on a piece of two pound monofilament line turned into tippet, hey, that's glory, guys. Remember me telling you that uh, the, all, these, uh, all these towns were built on railway tracks? There's one. This bridge over here, kind of interesting. A couple of years ago, they had a flash flood come through from over there and it came all the way to the railroad tracks. It filled up. Imagine that much rain, that this all filled up. That's like 15 feet of water came through here, took this bridge and actually moved it over here. And it was buttoned up against those trees and they had to take cranes and reposition it. Dang. But look at how gorgeous Black Earth Creek is. Look at how easy it is to get to the bank. Look at all the cutaway banks where there can be trout. And that's what we're gonna go and do and fish. I like to fish from that backside. It's a little tighter inside here. Um, if you're gonna go in water in Wisconsin, guys, you better be wearing waders, because it is cold. Even I won't last standing in here. I won't make it through the day. I'll get so cold. But you see, it's a little bit difficult to think about trying to cast in here. You might go to different parts of the trail, step down, cast in. There's no need, there's so much here. This goes literally 
they told me that this goes for eight miles that way. And there's something like 200 little spillways, just like you see right here. 200 of them, all in one little spot. You might fish the whole day. You'll actually crave to see another fisherman. You'll actually miss, you'll, you'll be sad that you're alone all the time. There used to be a big tree here that had a rope on it and a rope swing and the kids would swing in and they'd plop down right in here. It's uh, it's only about shoulder deep so the kids could all swim here like a swimming pool. And then that, that, uh, that flood came in and just wiped it all out. Wow. All right, let's toss a few, let's toss a few casts. All right, guys, you were about to cast into this area. It gets a lot of pressure, so I'm just gonna throw maybe 10 casts in here, 20. I'm not gonna kill myself. If we're looking for where, where are the fish gonna be? We wanna be right underneath the, the froth, right in there, and the, that's where they're gonna be standing, looking upstream, snapping anything that comes down. As soon as it comes through, they're gonna inspect it, snatch, inspect it, snatch. So I'm gonna be casting up there and letting it come through. Casting it up through, dead drifting it through. Casting it slightly up, letting it dead, dead drift through. And you're gonna go and, you're gonna go and prospect that entire spillway there from, from beginning to end, because you're not sure where they're gonna be. They might be in the eddies over there. And then I'm gonna slowly work my way, casting and dropping, 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 dropping right inside that eddy, because there might be a few that have stopped feeding and they're gonna be hanging out over there just because it's calm. And then they're gonna come back up to the seam where the water's quiet and the water's moving, that little seam, they're gonna be coming back in there just to get a bite, just to get a bite, just to get a bite. The cool thing about trout is, a lot of times they have to feed constantly because they only like to eat little things. So they gotta eat a lot of them. Anyway, you try here, don't kill yourself because remember, we've got miles of river we can go and test. We don't have to try to force these fish to eat. We're looking for the ones that are in the mood. Let's go and cast. And you can see that, look, if you look here, my tip of my rod is already touching the shoreline right there. So that means that that's one rod length, two rod lengths of line is all that I can throw out there. And suddenly I got nothing, you know, I got no more space. So a regular, like I, like I told you, a regular fly weight, a regular weighted line would require three and a half times the rod length. I'd have to carry 35 feet out to try to get a cast. And if I'm only carrying 20 feet out, it's gonna feel like the rod's not even bending. And that is a miserable experience. So overweight your line, double it. If you got a six weight line here, six weight rod, put nine weight, put 10 weight line on, who cares? That's fine. Two, two rod lengths is all you're gonna throw out. Spiral lifts, drop it back down, spiral lift, drop it back down. Let's get started. Before we go, I wanted to show you what a brass headed prince nymph looks like. There he is. He's got a brass head. The prince means, oh, it's a brass headed pheasant tailed prince nymph. Let's take the pieces apart. It's a nymph, so he's got a nymph body, no legs. He's brass headed. It's a prince, meaning he's got white wings added on, and it's pheasant tailed. There's your prince nymph. There is no place in North America where you, where you cannot wear fish don't bite a brass-headed prince nymph. So always have them. You probably want to have them in tiny little sizes from 12 down to 18, 12 down to 16 at least. I carry like today, I think these are 14s, that size. Roughly, they're the as wide as my finger. Why? Because the water's moving pretty fast. I got to get it to drop down really, really quick. And, and that size brass head is what's gonna carry it down. And I know from experience, there's big enough fish in here. There's 12, 13, 14 inch fish. If I hit them in the right place, this is exactly what they're looking for. They're gonna snatch them up. Now I'm not gonna add anything on yet. I've got a couple of teeny little gnats. I mean, they're the size of a peppercorn, that small, that I may add on later if I think that's necessary. I will shamelessly Swallow my ego and ask the first fly fishing local I see, what's your rig? Just ask them, they'll tell you. They want you to catch fish, they want you to come back. All right, let's get started. Okay, I just made a mistake. Can you guys see those riffles, those shallows right there? As I came up, I saw the water suddenly move, the surface move. There's some pretty decent size. Could be trout, could be sucker, could be suckers but could be trout 
that are actually might be laying eggs and stuff right there and I spooked them. Stupid, stupid me. But it means now I have an idea of where they are today. Because if one of them are sitting up on the shoals like that, then chances are there's going to be more. And that's where I'm going to go looking, right on those sandy transitions. Oh, do you see that? Do you see, do you see, do you see? Do you see the ripples there? They're pretty big. I mean, I'd be surprised if that was trout. I suppose it's possible, but it's probably suckers. But at least I have an idea that they're there. Oh, this is, oh yeah, there's ripples right there. They're not moving. I'm gonna back up a little bit. Because right now, if, if they're still in the area, they haven't left, they haven't seen me yet. This is hard to do. Usually I use a, I use a double haul and I'm trying to hold the camera instead at the same time. I'm gonna try to get upstream a little bit and feed it to them sideways so I can do a dead drift instead of coming up behind them. Be right back. Okay, I'm just trying out some rods while I'm waiting for it to warm up. And now I've got my, I've got my Angler's Roost. Angler's Roost Enterprises, 11 foot, three piece, two, three weight. Look at this thing. With a fighting butt. It drove John crazy when I said I wanted a fighting butt put on here. But it allows you to use two hands if you want. Now, you, you'd be surprised how often that's useful. But you gotta, you gotta adapt. You gotta know that you're not gonna get a really tight loop that it's going to be a gentle loop and that works. It works really well even for bass because the bass can see that lure, they can see that white up in the air coming and they'll actually meet it on the surface. So if you're willing to give up, you know, the penetration, that, that perfect looking cast, then you, what you end up with is the ability to make these huge loops, soft loops that actually just lay the hook down gently. And I swear to God, when you've got a two, when you've got a two or three weight line on, could be pulling in a three pound fish and they cannot shake it. That thing is so whippy. Look at this thing. This thing is so whippy. They cannot shake it. It never loses tension. They can never pull hard enough that they snap your line. Instead, the rod bends, but never bends enough that they can break it. I bring every single fish. All right, let's go see how this works. <clears throat> it's not necessarily because it's better. I just felt like using John's rod today. It's all beat up. I got to get a new cork. I got to get a new butt. But I'm going to start circling around inside there and I'm going to use some tiny little midges to see if I've tried on the surface. I've got some caddis that I haven't tried yet because I haven't seen anything floating. I haven't seen, I think I saw one tiny little nibble there. And I don't know if you guys know this, but when you're coming to a brand new place like this and you're trying to figure out where the fish might be, where you could try looking for the shoals like I did, because just because I saw their humps, I saw them moving on the shoals. But when in doubt, look for the foam. Wherever the foam is, that's actually where there's gonna be bugs. Where there's bugs, there's gonna be fish. So if you look through here and you're trying to decide where should I go first, do you see the little bit of foam right in here? See that foam? They're gonna be sitting underneath that. That's where they're gonna be, downstream from it and underneath it, looking up to see if there's anything that they wanna rise invite so that's what I'm gonna to try to do just coming upstream a little bit this is one of the 200 spillways look at this they're not even they're not even 50 meters 50 meters apart and it just goes up and up and up and up this is what the whole thing looks like yeah nice day to be on the river the tricky part trying to figure out what they want to figure out what they're biting on. I'm using my brass-headed prince nymph, my brass-headed pheasant-tailed prince nymph to start because I got to get down, but I'm thinking I'm way too big. We're going to see. It may be useful to go over what they're describing here. You can see the different parts. This is a really cool diagram. It shows the different parts of the river. I like to fish the riffles because the riffles are going to be oxygen rich and that's where the food gets concentrated. But even here it's saying the run actually is right downstream, just downstream from the riffle, you get the run. So if, if we're gonna show you guys, there's your riffles right here. 
In fact, it's better up there. Those are riffles up there. This is more of a spillway. The spillway, if you think of that as equivalent to the riffles, you get riffles, and then starting right about here is where you can literally see the water gets darker and deeper. There's your run. Then you get a little bit of a flat, possibly a pool, and it repeats. We're looking for the big dogs. They're gonna be hiding right in there. This is called a reveal. How cool is that? The driftless, of, the driftless region of Wisconsin. And this, I've been walking upstream up this Black Earth Creek, guys. For what, the hump way over there? That's only about a half a mile away, I suppose. Thirds of a mile. I'm gonna walk up here about about another mile and then work my way back down and by the time I get done I'm gonna be hungry and we'll be back in the Jeep. And Freckles and I'll go get one of those burgers at that drive-in. I said burger and she turned her ears. Burger? No, didn't look. Anyway, look how gorgeous this is guys. This is Black Earth Creek all the way down. I'm seeing a little bit of mud but it's still cold. That's what you're looking for. Uh, I just don't know how far I want to go. It's less about fishing and more about getting out right now. Got my 12 foot rod. Working just fine. I see some really light shallows up here, some riffles. You can see even from here, from 100 yards away, the water is really light green. I'm seeing a lot of suckers, uh, one foot red-tailed suckers, humpback. Um, they're skittish, That's those are the bow wakes that I saw. Those are the bow wakes that I saw in the river an hour ago. Not interested in those. They never bite anything, not anything ever. You'd have to spear one of those to get it. But what I'm looking for is the green water in the shallows there green transitions that's going to be the kind of place where the trout might hang out yeah the deep ponds too i suppose but the feeding ones are going to be in the moving water that's what i want to try to get to i just don't want to stop too early i'd rather work my way down for the next three hours let's keep walking it's such a pretty area god look at that guy's view it's about 9 30 in the morning so that means that way is east, that way is west, which means that guy, that guy's house faces west, clearly. The backside here faces west. It's all sunsets for him. Cool. And here's what we're talking, here's, here's a few things we just learned. That guy was about six inches, maybe seven. And the big question is, am I using the right hook for that size fish? The answer is yes. How do we know? Because he bit. It's heavy enough to get down in those riffles. And what I wanted to tell you guys was this. If you're casting into the calm stuff, are there gonna be fish in here? Yes. But you gotta be way more careful about how good your dead drift is. You see the stuff that's floating in the river right there? You gotta move at the same pace. You can't be going upstream, you can't be going downstream. You're gonna send little alarms through his head. But when you get into the riffles, you already know they're there too. They're feeding. But the water's going all helter-skelter everywhere. You don't have to kill yourself about presentation. So, I'm gonna go and cast right back in the very same place over there because these guys always feed in groups. They're all, you, you'll, you'll hardly ever find a little one all by himself. And we're gonna go catch some more. Just took a nice little brown trout in here. Probably a personal best for this river. What's your name? Chester. Chester just helped Mark. And there is my beauty, I'd say. 14 inches, six, maybe 16. And I love to catch foot-long brownies. 
I could catch these all day. They're such, they're such great little fighters all over the river. Got to be gentle with this one. I'm going to take a couple pictures and put them back in. Again, they're going right in on that brass-headed prince nymph. Huh. Go to, go to lure, and they're actually down at the bottom of the riffles here. They actually were in that pool, so I'm going back in there again and again. Here's a thought for all you guys that got waders and always have to wade in. Look at all the banks all trashed now. It's all muddy, there's footprints everywhere. It doesn't look pristine, that's just one person. Then imagine that there's two, then imagine that there's four, then imagine that there's eight, and pretty soon the river's all chewed up. Why don't you just get a longer rod? Look at this, 12 foot rod gets all the way to the other side of the river effortlessly with a single, just a single hand cast. You can do a roll, roll it up. And now I just covered literally with a single line. Watch this, let me pull a, get unstuck here. You guys are gonna watch with only two rod lengths out. You're gonna watch me do a roll, drift back, do a single handed cast. And I just went 50 feet upstream with that all the way to the far bank. And I'll be able to actually drift that all the way down. And when it goes all the way down to the end, way over there, this is that two weight 12, that 12 foot two weight guys. I'm already on the far bank and look where my feet are. I never touched the mud. The bank, when I'm done fishing this river, you don't even know I was here. And yet I can go all the way down to that next set of riffles, the tail down there where the bird is. And then when I'm done, I'm just gonna roll this and throw it all the way back up and do it again. I'll do a snap roll cast here. And now it's right back up. No time did I have to step in the water and dangle my rod. Look how long this thing is. I'm halfway out in the rod, I'm halfway out in the river just holding it if I needed to. But if I wanted, you can just do a snap cast like that and roll it right back up. You never have to set foot in the river, so it always looks gorgeous. Something to think about. Let's keep fishing. It's almost time for lunch. Um, what do we got so far? A, a pretty little six inch brown that's got the stink off, so that's what started all of this. Then the 17, 18 inch brown, gorgeous. Gosh, he was gorgeous. Ah, I gave him a big kiss on the head. Uh, and then I just got another 12, maybe a hair over 12, 12 and a half, 12 and a half inch brown right here. And I'm just trying to test this pool out. It seems like there's something they like about it. Maybe it's the sunshine baking it a little bit. They, they like a little bit of sun. But we're doing pretty good so far. And I never set foot in the river, so I didn't muck it up. Something to think about, guys. And also, something to think about is 12 foot, two weight rod. They might look stupid and whippy, but if you're watching me go literally from 100 feet down to 75 feet upstream and I don't even move my feet, and I can hit every part of the bank doing this, and I can go bigger if you want. Watch this, watch. Snap, draw back, cast. And there it is right on the far bank. Snap, draw back, cast. And now I just plopped it down right over there. And I can sit there and drift. And I'll end up getting one of those big dogs that's hiding underneath the cutaway bank. If I want to roll back up and go to the inside of the river, draw back, roll it up. And it's all the whippiness of that 12 foot two weight rod that gives me all that added loading to be able to do all of this just effortlessly. It's so light. And then when I get a fish on, it feels nice. I can still feel those little fish. So it still feels like I'm fighting something. John Kuhn was brilliant when he came up with this. This angler's roost, 12 foot rod, or 11 foot actually, 11 foot two weight. It's absolutely phenomenal for rivers like this. You can dangle if you need to dangle. You can do a two-handed spay cast. You can do a single-handed haul with it. This particular rod, I wish they were still available. John, I know you're fishing up there in heaven. Man, there are fishermen down here that need you. I hope somebody takes over your store. Yeah, we're gonna drift this a little bit. I gotta put the phone down. Asleep, sunburn. We got a nice 18 inch brown trout at uh, Black Earth Creek, so I'm taking a couple hours off to go further north and west. We are headed to Devil's Lake. 
Wisconsin. But what I wanted you guys to see was what this part of the driftless region looks like. Remember me saying rolling hills? But you do have these incredible flat valleys too. Like this, I think we're actually on a riverbed, a prehistoric riverbed from long ago. I mean, it's so flat. And then you've got great big mountains over there and mountains off to the other side. How cool is that? Look at that. So we're headed to Devil's Lake because Devil's Lake actually has other trout creeks there. And I just needed to get out of the sun for the for a little bit. Like from noon until two, it's a little too bright. I wasn't ready for it. All right, see you in a few minutes. This is cool, guys. You are at Devil's Lake State Park in Devil's Lake, Wisconsin. And we're, the lake's way over here. We're coming in from the, we're coming in from the north side, I think. We're heading west, west right now. And we're coming in on the south shore. So this is the south side of this lake. Imagine the uh, two mountain ranges, hills really, that eventually got drained. Some of the oldest mountain ranges on the North American continent actually. And there's the lake. Pretty cool. But it's gonna cost money for me to just go in there just to see it. And all I wanna do is just go fishing. And I don't know if they're gonna let the dog out. I don't know what to do. Let's go see how much it costs. Maybe I'll spring for the money. Devil's Lake State Park. Let's go see. Even if we're just here for a minute. Sometimes you have to spend money. The vehicles with stickers go that way. I'm stickered without. You have to cough up some money here. Positive. So to get in was $17 for the day or $38 for the whole season. What do you think I did? I bought my sticker for the year. I'm coming back. Look at this. It's a glacier lake. I'm coming back loaded for bear. You don't even have to pay extra for your paddle board. I'm coming here with my wife. I'm coming here with my kids. I'm coming here with my grandkids. I'm snorkeling and I'm gonna go find the bottom of that lake. It's gonna be marvelous. Right now we gotta go jump in that lake and get our feet wet, right Fleck Rolls? You gotta cool off. Huh. Wanna know what a glacier lake looks like? Check this out. Wow. Wow. Winds out of the north. Somebody's daring to paddle, but we gotta go over here and put our feet in. I gotta wash this dog. Wow, what a fine and an 18 inch brown trout. Doesn't get any better than that. Come on, freckles. I got freckles on my makeshift leash because we didn't know we were coming here. Look at this. This is heaven. Come on, freckles. These are happy feet right now, let me tell you. They're muddy feet from the Black, Black Earth Creek. But look at this, guys. This is like back home in Minnesota. This is what the lakes are like. This is what it looks like. This is glacier, glacier fill here. Can't wait to come back here. Once a month, twice a month. For the rest of the summer. It's running right now. Excellent. May 1st, Nary, going in the water. <laughs> well, that was an excellent first visit to Devil's Lake, Wisconsin. I bought the season pass. I 
jumped in twice. I'm on film once, but now we gotta remember why we're here. We're here to fish. So it's time to start heading back to Black Earth Creek and pick another section to fish for four more hours and then that'll be nightfall. That's when it starts to get calm again. Those last two hours before the sun goes down, that was, that's when it might be warm like this and there might be a hatch that forms. Then we get to do some surface uh, fly fishing. So, here we go. Those are tired feet. That's a happy rod. This is a happy guy. Hope you enjoyed this day in the Driftless. I didn't get to film as much as I wanted because I forgot my tripod at home. But uh, hope you enjoyed seeing some of the fish and some of the sights. Hope you kind of saw some of the casts. I'm coming back. We're going to finish these videos because truth be told guys, there's a set of casts that you need to use here that if you use, if you learn them, you'll be able to use them in the Driftless region and everywhere else. And you will be a very happy, very accomplished fly fisherman. This is Mark Vogt and Freckles saying bye from the Driftless. We'll see you later, bye.